Now, let's take a look at how immigration and our military have been intersecting in the news lately. Chairman Dick Durbin of the Senate Judiciary Committee apparently has been sharing notes with Illinois, which just passed a law allowing foreign nationals, including some illegal immigrants, to become cops. Except he wants to take that framework and apply it to our military. This is the same guy who just the other day blocked the Epstein flight logs from being handed over to Tennessee Senator Marsha Blackburn as per her subpoena request filed in Congress, she alleges. Banner week for this guy. Take a listen. The presiding officer, my colleague from the state of Illinois, has legislation which addresses one aspect of that. Her bill, and I hope I describe it accurately, says that if you are an undocumented person in this country and you can pass the physical and the required test, background test, the like, you can serve in our military, and if you do it honorably, we will make you citizens of the United States. Do we need that? Do you know what the recruiting numbers are at the Army and the Navy and the Air Force? They can't reach their quotas each month. They can't find enough people to join our military forces. And there are those who are undocumented who want the chance to serve and risk their lives for this country. Should we give them the chance? I think we should. This guy's never cracked open a history book, has he? Because if he had, he would have read the part about the ancient Roman Empire before it collapsed, doing that exact same thing, and then realizing too late that they had imported into their military ranks and civilian ranks an entire fifth column. We have illegals on the FBI terror watch list, drug cartel members, and now Chinese nationals who could even be CCP assets pouring across the border. Which, which part of that is supposed to rejuvenate our military? And also, this guy has never been anywhere near a real illegal immigrant, has he? The only ones he has experience with are those used by, as props by activist groups. Does he really believe that illegals, mostly fighting age young men and trafficked women and children, are breaking all of our federal immigration laws just so they can turn around and start following all the other laws? Like these two Venezuelan migrants arrested in connection with a string of shoplifting crimes in Chicago are doing, following all our other laws? And then on top of that, are they going to risk dying on the front lines to defend those very laws that they broke? Wouldn't that be a sight? Sending over our illegal aliens to guard the borders of our client states abroad. I mean, Congress already sends our taxpayer dollars for that, so maybe it's not so much of a stretch. I don't know, Senator Durbin, but I am from Southern California and I've known my fair share of illegal immigrants. There are two main types as far as I can tell. The ones who stay quiet and work hard, which doesn't excuse cheating and cutting others in line. But that is still wildly different from the others who brag about hating America and about being illegal, while they wave the Mexican flag literally everywhere. They wear it as a badge of honor as a way to say F you to America, because they're just here to take and undermine, not to contribute. Of those two categories, which do you think the woke Marxists who are inside our military already will be actively recruiting? The ones they can weaponize against the American people whenever the National Guard needs to be deployed. Because as it stands, our ser service members would never enforce unconstitutional orders against their friends and families, like say mass gun confiscations. But what about people who've been propagandized into believing that they are exacting just punishment on the purveyors of an evil racist system? Joining us now to discuss is military defense attorney Davis Yance. Davis, thanks for being here tonight. Good evening. Great. So obviously legal permanent residents can currently join our military and use this as a pathway to citizenship, which is a good mode for assimilation and for building patriotism. But do you think that that is distinctly different from what Senator Dick Durbin is calling for and wanting to actively recruit illegal aliens? It is absolutely distinctly different. And here is one of the primary concerns that I have as a former military officer. My first assignment was at Lackland Air Force Base. That's where basic training for the United States Air Force takes, takes place. When I was a JAG there, one of the constant problems we have is that there isn't a thorough background check that is done on military recruits. There were already issues with people who were United States citizens who could not pass a background check that would come into the military, get through basic training, and the background check process was so backlogged, it wouldn't even catch up to them until they were in military technical training. I mean, there were individuals who were Muslims, ties to radical Muslims that were in security forces training, meaning the people that are trained to defend our military installations in the United States Air Force, and that background check did not catch up them to them until they had essentially completed that military training. So when I hear a United States senator say things like we're going to recruit and and bring in undocumented 
illegal immigrants into the United States military, my question is, what is that background check? How are we even bothering to identify these individuals that are coming in? This is, I mean, it's wholly irresponsible and it should not even be something we begin to talk about unless we can address a whole lot of other concerns first. And then should begin with why, why do we have a military recruiting crisis in the first place? And then, of course, is the big question. So do you think by them trying to pivot the issue back onto illegal immigration and just kicking the ball over to that court, they can ignore the major issue, like you said. Why are young, specifically young, but young, but young women, too, why are they not joining up anymore? Why do we have a recruitment and retention crisis in the first place? Because if they start to ask those questions, it doesn't look too good for them. So they'd rather just ignore that and make it a, a different political issue, would you say? No, that, that's absolutely right. And and again, you brought up the Rome, the history of the Roman Empire. But one of the other critical issues, it wasn't just that they brought in mercenaries, they brought in non-citizens into their military. It's also there was a complete loss of the traditional values of the Roman Empire. There's a loss of sense of those traditional values. That's what we're losing in the United States. That's what we're losing in the United States military. That is why there is a recruiting crisis. What is it that we even believe in as a nation? Are we even a good people anymore? And you're asking people to sacrifice their lives for a constitution that our federal government and corrupt leaders in our federal government are ignoring. So why are people going to join the military? Why are they going to sacrifice, um, their, be willing to sacrifice their lives if they can't even trust elected leaders, congressmen and senators not to be corrupt and not to fulfill their oath to the constitution? I think that's so important, talking about the tradition and cultures of our nation, and how at, at this point we've, we've done our best to just bulldoze them, right, to just level them and get rid of them. And I think it brings back to another another point, because you, you might hear some people saying, well, why are you so upset with what Senator Dick Durbin here is saying? Because as we we're talking about earlier with the legal, with legal aliens, people who are living here illegally, who are foreign nationals currently, but can use a pathway to, to citizenship, you know, that it's a form of assimilation and, you know, trying to impart patriotism. So then they might say, well, look at back in the day with the military used to be for some, you know, some hooligans, uh, including my own my own grandfather. You know, you committed a crime. It's either go to prison or join the military. You got to do one of these two choices, right, to kind of kick them into shape. And so thankfully for my grandfather, it did kick him into shape. It, you know, whipped him up into shape real good. However, but like you said, over these decades, we've really lost a lot of that. I know loved ones who've currently served, and I know it's still very strict. Boot camp is very strict. It's very rigorous. But you're starting to see some of that fraying as well, especially with the bureaucracy that they have currently. A lot of people who, you know, are very far removed from what the grunts have to do a lot of the hard work and they just start making a lot of policies that are divorced from reality and so we're starting to see that wokeism starts to fill into some of those cracks and so then my fear is if you start to bring in especially large numbers several thousand at a time which is what Durbin I guess w would be advocating here for is that it's not that the military is going to change them and they're I guess you know assimilate them in the same way that criminals back in the day were instead what I'm afraid of is that the illegal immigrants and their values or I guess lack of it will be what changes the face of the military because at least in my mind it wouldn't take too long for a lot of lawyers who want a lot of money and they know there's a lot of that a lot of money prestige when it comes to representing illegal aliens successfully against the United States federal government is that they can start saying well my clients are being discriminated against my clients get yelled at more than other clients and on and on it goes until everyone has to be treated with with kitty gloves so again that's my fear is back in the day criminals were changed by the system because we knew who we were as a people and it kind of molded these young men into a perhaps a better version of themselves. Nowadays, like you said, we don't have that tradition, tradition, traditions and that, and that culture to, to do the same now. So do you think that's another big component as you were getting at a moment ago? Yeah, that, that's absolutely it. We don't have a military that, that teaches our, our men and women in the military service the value of the Constitution anymore, either practically or by example. We don't see that in our military, many of our military and political leaders anymore. But even worse, we're spending all of this time and effort that should be done on training, on physical training, on getting men and women into shape so they can actually do the job on diversity, equity and inclusion training, on teaching people, you know, about pronoun usage and teaching people that you're, you know, you're potentially a predator if you believe in traditional uh, values related to marriage and human sexuality. So what's being taught to our military, it's becoming really focused on indoctrination. And we've had a purge of free thinkers. We call them free thinkers, but those people that actually believe in the Constitution and want to follow it, want to follow the law and believe in traditional values. And so that is my concern. Absolutely. Not only are we talking about something just practically dangerous when we bring in undocumented illegal aliens who have no idea who they really are, where they're really from. We cannot possibly practically do background checks, meaningful security clearances in a reasonable period of time. 
And then we're bringing them into a system that much like public education in this country is going to be filled with opportunities for indoctrination. It's going to tell them they're oppressed by American colonizers. That is an absolute recipe for disaster. That it is, Davis. Thanks so much for joining us tonight.